Let's start with uh, obviously the big news out there with coronavirus. Uh, we've seen a lot of disruptions already uh, with regards to the flow of agriculture and commodities. Uh, when we talk about food security, specifically in this nation, uh, what exactly does that mean? And do we need to be worried when we see these types of potential pandemics break out? We do, and there's a couple reasons for that. First and foremost, we export about $10 billion of agricultural products to China every year and import about $5 billion worth of agricultural products from China. And as we're thinking about that, that affects the price of corn, soy, agricultural commodities domestically in the U.S. that are used in animal feed, that are used for human consumption, and that are used for our domestic food security. So when you see pandemic-level outbreaks of disease in different parts of the world, mm -hmm. we have to think to ourselves, where is the food security associated with our domestic production of food, and how does commerce affect that? Mm. So these are big questions to grapple with, and certainly not something you can answer right away. I just wonder, are you seeing the way people in your industry, companies in your industry are handling food differently in the wake of the coronavirus? I think people are, are starting to realize that uh, domestic grain for animal use in America to feed animals, the majority of, of the grain that we grow, of course, is for animal feed in yes. the U.S. So thinking about how to build more security around that is increasingly important. And you see farmers who are struggling today economically to make ends meet because the price of corn and soy has depreciated aggressively with all of the global trade agreements and also disease issues. So I'm seeing folks in the industry really focusing more on strengthening their domestic supply chain. So strengthening that domestic supply chain, you have to do that in the context of a rising, a growing population, mm -hmm. uh, just greater appetite or greater consumption uh, from that population. Then, of course, you're dealing with climate issues, too. I mean, you're talking about the Corn Belt essentially moving north and uh, things that we used to be able to plant in one state. Mm -hmm. Now you're planting in another state and things get shifted around. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you prep for that? How do you plan for that? What I love that question because yeah. we now live in a corn economy, our, our nation's <laughs> biggest crop, as we all know, yeah. where over 40 percent of our corn goes to ethanol use. So hmm. you hear this sort of rumor that goes around and proliferates that um, you know world population is going to double by the year 2050. Mm -hmm. We now know that's not true. And likewise, we're giving 40% of our corn to make um, you know energy at an energy loss. Mm -hmm. So growing uh, crops in a more regenerative manner, using better crop rotations, managing soil in a more protective nature is something we're focused on in my company. And beyond that, stop you know growing gasoline and mm -hmm. instead grow food for people, and that creates more security domestically. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about your product, uh, your Pioneer Chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, these are chickens that can eat a diverse diet. Uh, they're raised in about two months, and it's, it's free range. They, they roam around. Pasture raised. Yep. Pasture raised. Okay. What kind of demand is there for your chickens from outside of the U.S.? Is that a possibility right now? And if not, at what point can it be? So it's really important to have diversity of diet in an animal. So we breed heirloom uh, breed animals, our Pioneer Chickens. Mm -hmm. and. Not only do we breed better health into the bird and a bird that doesn't suffer and can actually go outside, but part of that breeding process is making the, sure the animal can digest things besides corn and soy. Mm -hmm. And that works not only domestically, but internationally because not every country just grows commoditized corn and soy. Mm -hmm. People have different local crops. Having an animal that can digest more effectively, mm. diversity of diet in different geographies globally is really important for creating food security in developing nations. But how do you do that at a cost that's favorable to consumers? Because right now, a lot of these chickens, uh, I mean, they cost a lot. I mean, you're, you can pay 20 bucks for some of these compared to sort of a conventional chicken in the grocery store that might be half that price. So how do you scale up to feed 300 plus million people here in the U.S. at a cost that many of them can afford? Uh, great question. It's not really about the input costs of the feed mm -hmm. or a chicken that takes 15 days longer to grow. Right. It's creating systems that lower the variable costs mm -hmm. in terms of production. So we have a plant that can produce 700,000 chickens a week in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And by supporting the community and creating jobs in Oklahoma in a plant that has scale to it, mm -hmm. we're able to offer a consumer price that's on par with other grocery store chickens. Now, your chickens are sold through some retailers on Cook's website and also through Fresh Direct. Mm -hmm. And I just want to bring it back to coronavirus. That's in contrast to wet markets in China right. and Southeast Asia, where shoppers, usually Chinese people, like to pick their meat and their fish fresh, alive, and then get it slaughtered to ensure that it hasn't been frozen. How do you fix that system? I mean, based on what you know, what you've observed, how do you fix that system and keep some of the benefits of that, yet do so while ramping up biosecurity? Yeah, um, you know, 
there was a time in the U.S. where we had similar systems to wet markets in different parts of the world, too. But as the middle class continues to rise in different parts of the world, globally, we're seeing that retail is overtaking wet markets. And I think with the food safety concerns that we all have today, you'll see wet markets uh, diminishing, retail increasing, and more share of wallet going into high-dollar retail sales.